A Confederate fleet lays at the bottom of the Mississippi and New Orleans is in danger. Hello and welcome to Civil War in Hindsight. I'm Lieutenant Tommy. With me as always is Prospector Johnny. And, and Johnny, I might be... Look, I don't mean, I don't mean to pre-celebrate here. I may be jinxing us. Okay. I did break out the whiskey for oh. this because this week, Johnny, it looks like, it looks like Nolens is going to yeah. probably fall in the very, very near yes. future. All the dominoes are set for that to fall. And, oh, and yeah. That's, yeah. When that goes, yeah. the war is going to yeah, be over in like a this. month. Like, it's got, no I mean, way. that's uh, uh, such a crucial part of this Anaconda plan. If we get those ports and, I mean, basically freeze that portion of the Mississippi, right? That's it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That that that, I mean, that gives us a. Northern, what are they gonna do? Yeah, that gives us a northern way into the Mississippi. Gives us a southern way into the Mississippi. New Orleans is the largest city in the South. So oh. if New Orleans falls, that's their major you know population zone. It is also the largest port in the South and one of the only ports uh, that the South oh. has access to that's not completely you know shut off or block you know blockaded. So uh, if that port falls, so. like. Now the South loses their their largest port. They've already lost the largest industrial zone in Nashville. So what? Is, I mean, yeah. they're gonna throw sticks at us. I mean, they're already throwing sticks at us the way it We're is. Getting them. What are they gonna have? I mean, yeah, yeah, they got some rocks maybe that they pick up off the off the field. But Johnny, I mean, they, this they major... get enamored with uh, with uh, uh, the Union's equipment and then you know stop fighting lose battles because of it. <laughs> Well, Johnny, this... Oh, they have food! They have food! I want that! Oh, they have better guns than we do. I want those, too. <laughs> uh, so this major plan of the Anaconda is going to come underway on the 18th of uh, April as the Union begins bombarding Fort Jackson and Fort St. Philippe, uh, which is near New Orleans. It is a two... Uh, uh, only defensive forts around New Orleans, just to the south of New Orleans. And uh, if these forts fall, New Orleans is wide open to uh, to invasion. <laughs> The first wave of these uh, uh, attacks here is going to be by mortars, uh, which the Union High Command, specifically Flag Officer Farragut, doesn't actually have faith that those forters are going to do what it takes to get those forts to surrender. He doesn't think they're going to actually cause enough damage to break the morale of the Confederates to get them to surrender. But hey... It, 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 what harm is it going to cause? Because they're out of the, I mean, you know, they're out of the range of the, yeah. the Confederate fort, so we can just start lobbing rounds in and hope for the best. Yeah, I mean, if I mean, and if nothing else, it's it's kind of the start of the the rest of the peppering that you're going to do. It's just a little, uh, hey, wake up and uh, don't don't rest and this is what you're going to deal with type of message. So that's I mean, it's not all bad, right? It's a uh, yes, yeah, you may yeah, as exactly. well. And hell, so that's gonna, it's the north. That's gonna... We've got ammo to waste. <laughs> That we do, Chuddy. Out in Virginia, Union General Irving McDowell is going to march towards McClellan's forces by occupying Falmouth near the city of Fredericksburg, uh, ensuring, though, that he keeps Lincoln's mm-hmm. directive by keeping an army between Washington and the Confederate army. So oh, okay. McClellan's like, McDowell, you need to get over here and reinforce me in Yorktown where I have three to one troop advantage, but I'm not pushing that. And I need your army to join me to yeah. make sure that we get. It's because I'm Yorktown. useless and should have been fired months ago. Yeah, there's that. And McDowell um, goes, no, I'm not going to disobey Lincoln, and I'm going to make sure that I stay between the Confederate <laughs> Army and Washington, but I'm also going to put re- pressure on Richmond myself by moving down towards Fredericksburg. Okay. So he's, this is so a good move for him. just kind of shifted yeah. but kept. He, he's, he's staying in that middle. You know, yeah, that middle zone. And yep. he passes might go through yeah exactly exactly and again now you've got two major armies that are in a position to threaten richmond from you know from the north and the only confederate army in this area of any substantial size is that one that's at yorktown commanded by johnson who isn't i mean he's facing three to one odds although at this probably maybe just take it over yeah (laughs) right take it right yeah maybe do that could you on the 19th of April, federal bombardment of Fort Jackson and St. Philippe uh, is going to continue while General Halleck out in Pittsburgh Landing is reorganizing his army for a push to Corinth, Mississippi. So General Halleck's the main guy that's over in that 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 zone. He commands yeah. over uh, uh, General uh, uh, Buell and uh, 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 U.S. Grant. On the 20th of April, the USS... Okay. Itasca and the Pinola are going to destroy river obstructions near Fort Jackson and St. Philippe. So the idea here is after two days of bombardment, uh, Flag Officer Farragut is looking at the forts mm-hmm. going, well, I don't know if they're going to surrender or not. And do we, 
do I even need to attack those forts? Because there's no army protecting New Orleans. So if I can somehow shoot up the Mississippi and get around the forts, who cares about the forts? I'll just leave them. They'll die so, on the vine. So his main you're just obstacle sne- sneak by him. Yeah, or, that's his hope here. I mean, his, how his main obstacle here though is the uh, Confederates actually put up some blockades in the Mississippi River. Specifically, they sunk some holes of ships and wrapped a whole bunch of chains uh, uh, in in the in the Mississippi to prevent large vessels from going up up river. Sure, sure. So on uh, the twentieth, dick move, but okay, I get yeah. it. So on the twentieth, uh, two U.S. vessels of this fleet go to uh, try to destroy those obstacles. The explosives that they use do fail to break up the hulks and chains. So essentially, what they're going to do instead is just ram the shit out of it and try to pull the stuff out, which they do successfully. Most of the obstructions oh. are now gone on the twentieth. So did we use our big metal ship or whatever? Uh, no, or, we uh, yeah, the, 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 just our normal ass ships. Normal. We just ran into it and they're like, oh, see if it works. Yeah, pretty much. The, no, the normal ships is what being used here, but it's it, it, we'll get there in a second uh, as to what is really impressive here in the next couple of days. Uh, General McDowell would also that, meet I, with Lincoln. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> General McDowell is going to meet with Lincoln at Aqua Creek near Fredericksburg for a review after meeting the, uh, the you know, meeting the president, showing him his troops. Look what I have. Look, look what I have taken, Lincoln, uh, to be impressed, be impressed with what I'm actually doing with what McClellan's yeah. not doing. After his, yes, uh, Herr Lincoln, please be impressed and like me. After his meeting, McDowell sure. is going to personally escort uh, President Lincoln and Secretary Stanton and Chase back to Washington. So maybe McDowell might be replacing McClellan. Maybe he's meeting directly with the president. I hope. I can't. Please. So maybe. Because uh, some, uh, you know, still as of the twentieth, something's got to give. The siege of Yorktown's going on and has made no substantial progress because. McClellan won't push his three to one advantage. Mm-hmm. Mortars he's, continue. He's, to... he's the worst. I yeah, just, he is absolutely just, just the worst. I mean, come on. Uh, mortars Lincoln. mortars but... are going to continue to fly into the dual forts on the 21st, uh, while Confederate Congress adjourns after signing into law uh, that congressmen and government officials are excluded from the conscription, which we already talked. I mean, there's oh, some how other. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's shocking information to shocking. learn that uh, they're totally fine uh, forcing other people to go and die needlessly to pre- preserve whatever the it is. But, uh, yeah, not them. And not their yeah, not their children. Uh, yeah, not their children. Uh, but there, there are some not 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 to not to be completely disfair here. There are some other groups that are excluded uh, that we talked about in previous weeks, including uh, miners. Uh, that being people who go into the mines, not children, because uh, you know <laughs> who cares about child soldiers at this point? Grab a gun, uh, buddy. Like what? Uh, you... <laughs> teachers are also excluded. So if you're if you're school te- now's a good time to operate a one room schoolhouse if you're trying to get out of war. Uh, yeah, uh, no kidding. And hell, maybe some of the South will learn to read. Uh, a ferryman and and some of the boat pi- uh, boat not pirates but boat pilots are are also excluded as well. Mm. So, uh, those are some of the groups that are excluded in addition to government officials. So you know, eh, there's that. So who are they looking for here? Just just some Every, uh, farmers, some poor, poor 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 folks, poor white people, specifically poor white people <laughs> yeah, here. I mean. Yeah, they, they don't they don't want the slaves to fight. Uh, oh, and uh, Trader President Davis on this day is going to write Congress uh, and Johnston specifically expressing his concerns over the two large armies that are outside his house. Like, look at these two armies. You got you got uh, McClellan, who's not really doing anything at Yorktown, but you also have McDowell, who's like, he's like he could. Yeah, like, don't have to like, worry about that guy. He's fine. He could. He, yeah, he could just like. But, and what are you going to do? There's nothing to stop him from coming. Uh, McClellan is going to receive more reinforcements on the 22nd to his already 3-to-1 advantage, pushing almost to a nearly 4-to-1 advantage at this point. And he still hasn't pushed on to Yorktown, so still just a siege. Great. Just, still just uh, building the street. And so what? What do, can somebody uh, send him a letter, ask him what sort of advantage he's looking for here? Like at what point? At what point would he be like, "Oh yeah, no, that's enough. I'm twelve to one, fifteen to one, whatever." Uh, like what? I have no idea, Johnny. Like it's like three to uh, three, three to one. You can lose three to one's half, plenty. Half your army, 
and again, again, again. Yes, I know. We've yes, with your whole taxes. like humans exist I mean, and stuff, yeah. and we not. You know, no, I, I, no, I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about the taxpayer mostly. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, the, the but, cost of this. But you the, could, the you could, yeah, you could lose half your army, and you're still, you're still fine. You're still fine. And, and it would end it like that. Like if it if it wouldn't just if it wouldn't end it all. Like fine, I get it, but you don't want to lose that that many men. But we could just. Like, we're so close to just demoralizing so close. them and taking everything and just do it. Just go. Like, it's gone uh, yeah, on I just... long enough. Uh, yeah, at this point, I don't know. What, we've gotten so much other land taken that just this it, Virginia. It's like for some reason there's some kind of hold in Virginia that we can't get over and officers just aren't willing for to some push. Reason. For some reason. And most of it's just officers. McClellan. Yeah, it's, McCle- it's McClellan. It's McClellan. That's the reason. Wait, this isn't a mystery. Uh, on the 23rd of April, Johnny, Flag Officer Farragut, he's going to continue to bombard the dual forts in New Orleans, but he's been uh, unable co- to compel them to surrender after several days of bombardments now. And now he's like, you know what? Screw it. I can't really do a land invasion of the forts because there's a lot of swamps that surround yeah. that, so that would be kind of stupid and right, suicidal. Yeah. So instead, why don't I take my entire fleet up the Mississippi now that we got the, uh, the, the barricades there <laughs> freed up? Now that we just... Hit the barricades and got past it. Now, a large percentage of Farragut's fleet is actually, you know, deep ocean frigates. These are your big, these are your frontline boats. And you don't typically take them on a river like the Mississippi. But Farragut goes... That's a big river, but, I mean... But Farragut goes, to hell with it. Here's what we're going to do. He lightens the boats by just getting rid of all shit that you don't need. Not the guns. <laughs> Keep the guns. But you get rid of all the other I mean, provisions yeah, and that kind of that. stuff. You start to lighten them up as much as you can to get that water line to go up as much as you so can. So we had like a, a New Orleans Tea Party type deal <laughs> with all the uh, well, extra shit going yeah, on. Yeah, but board. unlike the Confederates, <laughs> we're not just throwing it away or burning it. Like We're actually like, well, just stockpile that over here for later. Or, or oh, but, you know, so we don't so even need to just stockpile it. Like, he's just lightening gotcha. up the boats, putting them back on the shore, yeah. raising that, that, that sea line. And he's going to... He's going to make all preparations by moving his entire fleet just to the mouth of the Mississippi on the 23rd. Um, Farragut is determined that uh, this is the best course of action. If I just bypass those two forts and get up the river, there is no army yeah. protecting New Orleans. If I get up the river, I can just get into New Orleans, and then those two forts will eventually just... have to surrender because they'll be completely surrounded and cut off from any kind of supplies. So, so New Orleans doesn't have troops, so we would just walk in. Yeah, we're going to be like, Yeah, he's well, going to take... Yeah, he's going to hey take folks. his whole fleet and just walk in. <laughs> this bar is mine now. I'm and so he, be here. yeah, so he does that on the night of the 23rd <laughs> into the morning of the 24th. He's going to say deuces to those forts. At 2 a.m., two red lanterns are risen on the USS Hartford, his flagship, signaling the fleet below the Mississippi to move up the river. It is important to note here, like I said, that a lot of these are the deep water vessels, but he's made preparations to get up the river. But the other big thing yeah. with the deep, deep water vessels is there's a shit ton of cannons on them, so that's going to come in handy. They're, I mean, just roll it up to New Orleans with 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 deep ocean gunships. Yeah, they're uh, they're playing. And we can't. And just, we're just. I mean, we're. Just, do we have to? Do we have to just blast it? Can we? No. Uh, yeah. I mean, threaten? I don't know what his plans are once he gets up there, but. Uh, I mean, because if there's not an army, maybe don't just destroy. Yeah, the city. There's, yeah. There's that. Since we're trying to, you know, reabsorb. Eventually. His plan yeah. is to rush up the river, smash through the remainder of the barricade, and move on to New Orleans. At 3 a.m., the first eight vessels of his fleet move without even being noticed. Like they get through the barricade, they ram the remaining of the barricade, mm-hmm. and just keep moving up. The two forts are completely oblivious as to anything that's uh-huh. going on, and they're Heavy through sleepers. their past. They're good. They're, they're golden. <laughs> At 3.40 a.m., uh, the first vessels of the second brigade of nine ships, so uh, a total here of 17 ships, they are discovered uh, as, uh, as the forts begin to— uh, They you know, finally they woke finally up. up and they they finally see what's going on, and they begin to open up on them, uh, including the, f- uh, the flagship of Farragut's uh, USS Hartford. So it's, you know, hey, good for him that he's waiting on the second wave to make sure all his boys get through before he's, uh, you know, just plowing through and leaving people abandoned. That's how, that's how you do it, right? That's uh, what what leaders do. That's what leaders do. Though under heavy McClellan. fire from Union boats, uh, they're actually gonna uh, uh, push on while mortars, Union mortars, are gonna leave uh, uh, covering fire to you know for them to advance. So these Union mortars stay behind, keep bombarding the forts. Once the Confederates wake up, the Union mortars start lobbing rounds into the forts to get them distracted, while the remainder of the yep. fleet moves up. 
Nice. Like that. All but three small support vessels make it past the forts, and those smaller vessels are near, you know, they're disabled. They just can't make it up the river. They're not actually destroyed. And these aren't the gunboats. Right. These are just support boats. So that's not bad. Don't have to worry. Don't have to worry about those. Farragut's fleet. They did their job. Yeah, they did their they job. Supported them up. Uh, Farragut's fleet isn't completely in the clear because there is, right before getting to New Orleans, a makeshift Confederate fleet, including the CSS Manassas, uh, which is going to ram uh, the USS Mississippi and Brooklyn uh, with no significant damage done to uh, to either of those boats. So, get out of here. We don't care about D- these boats. It just ra- It's a ra- Yeah, it rams it. Just hit two, hit of, two them. of them. But and then what? Do we, did it just what ha- tons away? Did we? It does damage them. So it's like left? Ah, out of there. Uh, <laughs> I just have to note that they did try to put up a little bit of a fight. Uh, several of the Confederate uh, boats did stay to fight, but a few of them were like, uh, "This is a." Do you see that they have like gunboats, like actual like <laughs> battleships? I don't want to fight a battleship on my little rowboat dinghy with a cannon on it. I mean, yeah, come on. I'm on a I'm on a river boat that I brought a cannon onto. It barely supports it. I, it actually sends me back about ten feet in the water every time I launch it. And you want me to fight that? Yeah. And so uh, Farragut is only going to lose. Uh, he's only going to lose the USS Veranua uh, with a total of 37 killed, 149 wounded during this whole like escape up the river, blow up the whole Confederate fleet thing. Uh, the Confederate fleet okay. is going to suffer 61 killed, 43 wounded, with eight vessels lost in two fleeing. So they lose. Well, it's fine. Fleet. They have plenty of of extra uh, boats, vessels, and extra supplies and. Um, the manufacturing means to repair and, and fix these, these these boats and all the the equipment that you need, you know, the metals and everything. So they'll be fine. So as of uh, as of the end of the day here on the twenty third uh, or twenty fourth, uh, sorry, uh, Farragut is completely past both forts. Both forts are unable to do anything to protect New Orleans at this point. New Orleans has no army or no substantial army or forces or any defenses minus I mean, those two forts. So. Farragut has now sunk the only fleet that was protecting that uh, that that city. They've bypassed the two forts that were protecting that city. So now that city is completely and totally ripe for the picking. But we're gonna have to wait till next week to see what actually does happen there. But I'm drinking whiskey, so I have a feeling that uh, I'm gonna start being. I'm gonna I'm gonna get some Cajun Creole food here in a minute because uh, it sounds like. New Orleans is going to be back where it belongs, firmly in the control of the United States government. Uh, but you'll have to stay tuned next week to see how this all plays out. That's it for this week in Civil War in Hindsight. If you enjoyed Civil War in Hindsight, check out Historic Hindsight. We talk about all kinds of drunken shenanigans from history, like uh, Colt's brother going on some weird murder spree and having an affair with Colt's mistress. 